Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you can give me two minutes so I can set up, it will be very, very quick. Um, mostly quick. So are we... Uh, up. Right. All right. We're ready. Uh, my name is Benny Shemelevi. Uh, I am an uh, entrepreneur into various bits and bobs, uh, currently in IT, but I might turn into a Schmidt later on because it's really fun and we've got to stop uh, or start eating pandas that are not uh, actually alive, which would be great. But anyways, um, what uh, I am going to talk about today is about uh, PCL application configuration for Xamarin Forms in C Sharp. So I don't know how many of you uh, already use Xamarin at all or mobile development in any, no mobile at all. Well, um, uh, unlike, uh, let's say, an, um, web application, APIs, or a desktop application, uh, the difference between um, each platform is quite, quite uh, big, and there is um, a kind of a bit of a challenge to try to keep it as simple as possible while configuring a figure, um, uh, application. So let's have a look at that. So configuration in the .NET world, um, uh, in ASP.NET, for instance, we have the good old web config, system configuration, uh, building transforms. Uh, let's say that you have uh, multiple deployment, debug, uh, um, UAT, production, whatever. You'll be able to use transform in ASP.NET, for instance, um, or a web API to be able to deploy to those at build time. Or um, later on, if you're using a, um, a deployment server, server like Octopus, you'll be able just to get those renderers and to um, transform your package later on. Uh, on WPF, WinForm, and services, you can have a mix of app config settings, that settings, uh, system configuration, uh, and use some um, third-party libraries such as Loshita to uh, transform your configurations uh, into the, uh, well, the, the settings that you actually need. Silverlight, we've got XAML, web config, uh, system configuration, and um, also uh, we have built-in transform. So that's kind of relatively sweet. Wherever you want to deploy, you'll be able just to get your configuration, stuff it there, and then um, it will be transformed at deploy time, at build time. That's all very great. Um, so um, in Xamarin Forms, obviously, um, we are developing uh, mostly using a portable class libraries. And um, uh, if you have been developing with PCLs, you will know that that will be only a subset of the full .NET uh, API. A uh, couple of things are not included. A, for a file system, for instance, is not really there because obviously each application, each device, each operating system will have a different file system and that will be just a pain to unify it and uh, it will be literally pointless to stuff that into the PCL API. Uh, C dot configuration, uh, for instance, is another example uh, because each platforms are quite different, at, as we'll see later on. Um, this is just simply not there. Um, so pretty much, as I mentioned, each mobile platform has, no, uh, has its own file management system. Each mobile platform has its own configuration management. And um, also, shift10.configuration is a pretty heavy library, uh, especially when you try to um, create some custom configurations that is uh, pretty heavy. So that might be a really good idea to that to not attempt to include it into the PCL library. So what would be the options available to configure or cross-platform app. So again, as uh, both Sowell and Udara mentioned beforehand, we will end up in Xamarin Forms having a, a PCL shared project that will have of view models, of views, and just like any code that will access your API and so forth. Um, and, um, and yes, and the, uh, literally the uh, platform-specific project for iOS, Android, and Windows form, or else, would be mostly empty shells. Uh, well, it, it depends, but uh, mostly empty shells. Um, so uh, we've got literally three options to, well, three about options to, um, for, for configuration there. Uh, I'm talking about configuration within the application, such as, for instance, providing the address to an API or just turning on and off some settings, just like the normal app config stuff. We have native configurations on each uh, platforms. 
We also have constant configuration reader, for instance, and that is another option, and a unified configuration, which is a little project I mocked up today that will be uh, that is actually already available on GitHub, and that I might just package as a new get later on uh, with other stuff. So uh, let's have a look at the different um, platform configuration pros. So. Um, uh, on, on native, there is only one thing I can say really, it's built in. Um, yeah, that uh, you can just uh, already use it out of the box, don't need to write anything else. There are just a couple of differences that we'll see later on, such as uh, on top of having a normal, simple um, just application configuration, um, certain systems offer roaming options that will um, migrate or just synchronize configuration between devices, um, which is pretty useful. So the cons of uh, native platform configuration is just one config per platform. So if you are going to develop for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, you'll have to put that on, on the three uh, on the three platforms separately. Uh, there is no known Xamarin informed support for this, so you can have a look at the documentation. You won't find much stuff there present. Um, and uh, different configuration APIs, um, the good old system of configuration uh, beloved by some .NET developers, very simple, one configuration and the uh, um, API, um, get your app settings or your config manager done. Here you'll have to just go native, uh, do some a bit of dependency injection if you really want to go this way, and uh, you'll have just to learn how to, to do it. That's obviously a pain to maintain, especially if you tend to have large systems and uh, many, many uh, environments. Uh, no support for configuration transforms. So again, if you are using a build and deployment servers and are uh, ex uh, expecting a package just to be delivered to your build server, uh, to your deployment server, and then just transform the re uh, relevant settings to then deploy it to uh, your environments, you'll be out of luck, or you'll have just to script all that with your little hands. And it's obviously no, uh, not familiar to .NET developers, so again, this is uh, something you'll have to learn from scratch. Um, so let's have a quick look at what we've got uh, natively. Uh, na native iOS config, we're using those files called uh, plist, which is this kind of uh, XML, uh, site proprietary. Um, and uh, we have some way to access this through the uh, native iOS API doing this kind of stuff. It, it's not very exciting. It exists. Uh, but, uh, um, this uh, presentation will be online on, the Git, uh, on my GitHub, so you can um, have a link to documentation if you're interested. Um, Android config, yeah, uh, I didn't even feel this part. Uh, you have the shared preferences um, that also exist, which is just like a key value uh, per store. Um, that's um, also another one. And then you've got the native uh, UWP configuration. So you've got a few flavors here. Uh, the local a uh, app data, which is uh, again good to, uh, um, for pers persistency between app uh, sessions. Uh, roaming data, which is, um, allows just to, uh, to synchronize your configuration between devices. And uh, a temp data, um, uh, which is literally a cache that can also, as a cache, uh, be wiped uh, by your user. So that's probably not a good place to put your um, configuration settings, anyways. Uh, that's the way you access it. That's all very great and fun. Um, no, I'm not going to do a demo about the native configuration because it's boring. So um, that's a good reason, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit um, because we're going to get somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you about Core App, which is a little project, uh, which is a wrapper uh, around something called uh, X Labs, which is X Labs is where Xamarin is going to put some stuff in their main kind of branch. That happens before. Um, there is quite a lot of goodies in uh, in this project. Uh, literally, uh, all, all the things that are missing. If you are into, let's say, Prism, uh, if you've been doing a lot of WPF, that would be quite something similar. Um, instead of literally just uh, looking at the view models and other views to handle the navigation uh, and just have a lot uh, on, on your kind of UI element that allows you to separate the layers properly. So uh, you can access, let's say, uh, an alert, you can fire an alert box from your view model uh, directly um, via the navigation. Anyways, uh, what it allows you to do is uh, full control of the application lifecycle. 
Uh, unlimited dependency injection, I will get in details about it. Um, there is a support on Xamarin on dependency injection, but it's not so, so, so great yet on Xamarin, Xamarin forms. It allows you also to do some view and view model registration. Um, on the demo we've seen um, uh, a little bit earlier, I believe by Sohel, the um, view model uh, 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 pairing with a view is kind of not really explicit. You just have to create your view, your view model, and then you will navigate to one that is paired with the other, and that will, um, uh, that will just like uh, happen. Some magic will happen in the, in the background, but you won't be able to do anything more exciting than navigating, and you won't be able to test it either. Uh, I'm going to show you. After this page, um, again, control on navigation. At present, we can just really push and pop, um, but for instance, the stack of the navigation won't be testable if you want to be able to test, let's say, your view models um, uh, for um, a uh, command that is going to produce some uh, result of some sort, and that will ultimately result into uh, navigating to a different view um, using the examine form uh, built-in um, navigation that will not work. You need to be able to access a stack that is separated from the actual um, application navigation. Um, and uh, we do also have a unified platform events, such as when the application goes to sleep, starts, wakes up, um, and that uh, each platform will have a different way of handling it, that is unifying it and makes the unit test testable. So let's have a look at a bit of code for what I've just been talking about. Um, code, code, code. No, it's not here. Hello? Oh, yes, of course. This is just a very simple application that will later demonstrate how to um, um, manage application settings um, through the usual um, configuration manager um, um, API, um, cross platform with Xamarin forms. Uh, so um, uh, let's have a look at why it is already what I wanted to do. Yes. Mm. Yes, no, I need to just go through another piece of slide. Sorry. <coughs> yes, so um, about the dependency in injection on Xamarin forms, um, we do have one uh, which, ships, uh, which is called the dependency service. What it uh, allows you to do is on the Xamarin form shared, um, shared project to uh, declare an interface at, as you'll do with normal dependency injections and then uh, create one implementation for each platform such as uh, the camera, for instance. A camera will, will behave dif differently um, regardless, um, if you are developing on Windows app or Android or Apple. Uh, you'll need to be able to have a, a unified hook, uh, hook through it. So uh, usually you will just declare an interface that will have a method called take picture, for instance, and then just provide a different implementation and, and then uh, by, bind them um, when your dep dependency in um, injection container will be just built uh, and you will map your interface with your implementation for each platform. Uh, in Xamarin form, we do that this way by just using this kind of um, attribute on the um, concrete implementations of your, um, of your dependencies. Uh, the problem with that um, is um, your dependency, uh, yeah, your dependency only main, uh, will only be meant for Xamarin forms. Nobody else will be able to understand what those um, attributes are for. So if you are like me and like to share client and server code, for instance, that won't be able to be possible. Uh, this file will not be recognized and uh, yeah, that, that would be a bit pointless. Uh, also, if you want to use the dependency injection service of your choice like Autofac, Unity and Inject, uh, that will also be not possible. Uh, you will have to uh, go with the uh, one that is baked in the platform. 
Uh, also, if you want one uh, re registration method for all, um, uh, for all your um, application ecosystem uh, and for all the um, actual um, services that will be um, um, in, 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 in the different platform of your application. That will not work. And if you use advanced dependency injection features um, such as uh, generic uh, dependencies, which allow you to register uh, some unknown uh, generic um, services, let's say, um, that, that's not available. And if you want to uh, register multiple concrete implementation, uh, sorry, um, one, uh, one concrete type with multiple interface uh, that will not um, do as well. For instance, if you are quite heavy on, um, on class inheritance, having some core project, for instance, that will have a partial implementation of, of a feature uh, that will have some um, other kind of more uh, concrete implementation down the line that will also block you uh, there. So um, what, uh, what uh, we've got available again for, uh, for reading is a constant reader. So a constant reader is simply a, um, a simple reader that will just take a, a key and will then look at a switch statement that will just look up this key against what is there. So let's say I would like just to um, configure my connection string. So I will just pass uh, to this config a connection string uh, key that will then look into a switch statement, get like a constant, and you get it. Well, it's not very elegant. Uh, good thing it works on every platform, but I will not really recommend it. It's a bit of a pain to maintain. Um, um, uh, so, and um, so there is no um, support for configuration transformation. So if you want to have multiple environments, that is just, uh, well, you'll have some preprocessor directive, I suppose. There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, pound sign if and, and that's not going to be very, very fun. Uh, and you won't be able to alter that after compilation, except if you start doing some extreme uh, like code weaving. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that either. So uh, let's say it's not very elegant. Uh, it's, it's probably the one that is the most widely used uh, so far in the Xamarin informed community, I believe. Uh, demo, no, because it's also boring. Uh, that's, that's, that's why. Um, then we've got the fun one, the unified app one. Uh, so you just have one, it's literally a port of the uh, app uh, setting reader, but for the Xamarin informed platform. So you just keep your XML file with your um, app setting and then add key. There you go. Uh, one config for all platform, you just need to stuff this file in your shared uh, library and then simply reference the file on your um, platform project. Um, one API, which is again, uh, you simply, uh, it's config, well, I will go through the API, but you simply just pass the key that you want to find and that will fetch it. Uh, familiar to the net developer, that's great. Support for configuration transform, all the same. So again, if you're using um, build server, got a lot of environments, you still will be able just to have your, uh, your transformation uh, at completion time through um, the um, uh, code shita, um, sorry, slow shita library or um, via a script that you'll have on your deployment server. And you'll be able to alter that after compilation. So I think this is pretty good. Demo, yes, because it's not boring. That's actually a little bit of that as well. In the meantime, somebody wants a monkey. Yay! I'd love to, to answer a question. Um, how do you say monkey in Spanish? After <laughs> Google. Oh, phew, nah, come on. No, really? Really, no? Okay. okay. W what's the uh, name of the guy behind Xamarin? Oh, yes? Oh, yeah. Missed. Right. Uh, who is the guy that kind of founded Xamarin and that did also the Mono Project? Uh, who, who say that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hit. Oh, yeah. Okay, two for later. Got to save the monkeys. <laughs> All right. Yeah, by the way, I'm very, very happy that Xamarin is kind of free now. Um, that is just like very, very good. It was just like about a grand USD before license. Now it's just nothing. I like nothing. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, did I make sense or was I just too quick or no? Did, did, did you care? <laughs> if somebody's got the balls to say he cares, he can get a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> no monkey then. <laughs> right, did I say balls? I did say balls. Um, right, um, so 
I'm not going to do some live coding, coding but it's just something that I mocked a little bit uh, today. So the idea is quite pretty simple. Just going to run it first. Uh, no, I'm not going to run this one. I'm going to run it on iOS because I like iOS and it's a bit faster. <coughs> So the idea is I'm just going to click on a button and that is going to give me a, a key from a config file. Uh, like a simple web uh, so app.config file, that's it. And that's going to be cached as well. And also, by the way, you can encrypt it as well if you're afraid just to ship some um, a config file that is um, in a plain XML. You can actually, because you've got full control over it, you can encrypt it, ship it encrypted, and uh, when you just actually run the, uh, um, uh, the app, you can actually decrypt it. And you can even decrypt it safely if you feel like it. There are a lot of ways to do that. Many ways. Is that, is that running? Is it running? Is it thinking about it? Launching, yes. There we go. So, yep. Bim. There we go. That was uh, very, very exciting. I just clicked a button. It says hello from App Settings. So, let's uh, have a look what App Setting is. Um, so we are an examiner informed project, but it's been sweeted uh, with this kind of uh, X labs and uh, a little library that I just shipped on um, on GitHub today, and that will be NuGetted. Think about about uh, think about Prism, but in very very lightweight. That will allow you to do roughly the same thing. Um, we are in the app portable. Yes, here we go. So that's our view model. Um, if you're familiar with WPF. Uh, you probably will be familiar with commanding. By the way, if you are going to get into Xamarin in form, I really, really, really ask you to do something. Just lose the events, let them die. Just like on click on whatever, no, please just kill them. Use commands. Commands are testable, they're good, and they are just like good for, for, for people in general. Um, events are just, uh, they've been there for a round, we just need to kill them, that's all. So um, I do have like a few commands here. Uh, this command here is a PCL, uh, it says PCL command. What I do, um, because I don't, I'm a bit lazy to write some commands all the time. Think, if you're not familiar with commands, think about it as an action that you have security of execution that you can bind to a, uh, to, to literally any control on, um, on your XAML. Um, and uh, yep, that's pretty much it. The good thing about it is if you want to test it and or if you are like a cucumberist or BDD enthusiast or even a unit tester, you will be able to actually take your view model and then test the command directly. Uh, if you try to just uh, uh, test the on click, which is anything on code behind um, on Xamarin form XAML, you won't be able to test it and it is back practice in any case, especially if you keep on getting some new fresh developers they won't understand a thing about what's happening in the code. Again, that's not a good thing to do. So um, this command is simply just going to do something. It's going to execute this command, and it's, that is just a prerequisite. Uh, it's true, we can execute it. You can also, in this kind of command wrapper, do some interesting stuff, such as before the execution of a command, you can tell, okay, I want to show a spinner after 15 milliseconds, uh, for instance. If something goes wrong, I want to automatically log some uh, to a logger and I want to advise the user to, uh, that something is going to explode and uh, you can do literally anything. You just need to stuff that into this nice little get command method uh, which is also shipped on GitHub um, and we're using like a command delegate which is like a, a, a good practice in the command world again where you can just put all your interesting code. Let's have a look. Um, and the Hello. Uh, uh, there we go. That's a command delegate we are talking about. So we're just checking if it executes at the start, and then we can just um, spin a, a, a task that will be able to um, handle whatever you want to handle around this command, which is a bit more interesting than just clicking on an event, if you ask me. Uh, up. So let's go back to this uh, core application. Uh, no, sorry, where were we? Da -da 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 -da. On view model, there we go. So uh, we didn't implement that because we said it was not very interesting. Uh, and if we just click on uh, the method itself, 
which is GetPCL, what it's going to do is simply going to resolve something called uh, the iconfig manager and just get app settings and it's going to get that the, uh, the uh, value that is stored in the file corresponding to this uh, thing. Um, again, if you're not really familiar with dependency injection, here I'm just simply telling the program when it uh, kind of starts spinning that anything, every time I call, um, I, I resolve this iconfig manager, I'm actually uh, calling or resolving a singleton um, of type config manager. Um, I can demonstrate it this way quickly. Uh, and, uh, yes, so uh, here we go. That is how you do the things. Here, um, instead of using the built-in Xamarin form uh, dependency injection container, uh, I'm just set up some hooks at every single level. So at the PCL, um, at the PCL uh, shared library level, iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. You can literally register whatever you please. That will be available absolutely everywhere uh, in, uh, in your, your code. Um, that doesn't have even to, uh, to remain within the Xamarin code ecosystem. It goes everywhere. So here we're just saying uh, iConfig Manager is going to be of type config manager. By the way, if you're interested into um, uh, generic registration with dependency injection, that's the way we do it. The delegate commands actually just takes uh, two, um, two uh, types, um, parameters, but we simply uh, pass absolutely nothing and uh, at runtime they will just be clever enough to figure out, oh, I just have like a virgin uh, delegate command here. Let's resolve it. So now if we go to config manager, uh, we can see what's happening here. Um, so um, I actually made this one a bit extensible. Uh, it will be able to work with the normal app settings um, and then add value um, and then uh, value value. Um, but you will be able to extend it to create any kind of cu custom, uh, again, markup in your app.config um, because it's actually mapped to a simple POCO. We're mapping a POCO to a XML uh, file and um, that just works like magic. So the only thing I'm just doing here, uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm loading an XML file, uh, which is done kind of here. Uh, and then uh, I just, as you could have multiple configs, we load that, load that in, into a dictionary. And then whenever you try to resolve it, we know where it comes from. And we simply get the key that is uh, corresponding to um, this, uh, to this stuff, uh, which is get up setting. Uh, well, there we go. App settings that is we're loading this section. Go to implementation. If the section is on the root, we just really want to get the root of the file, and uh, then we just take any um, configuration section that we have. In a real, what it actually gets is. Oops, sorry. There we go. That is the app setting that is living in our PCL uh, app demo app, and that is precisely what is just getting uh, uh, returned by this uh, configuration manager. So ultimately, you end up having a configuration manager that will uh, work on iOS, Android, Windows Phone, any other platform using the good old uh, app settings um, from the um, app.config file that you already have. This is cached. You can, um, if you just use a Xamarin key value pair store, you can just write it to the disk and just restore it whenever a user is going just to uh, spin the app again. You can encrypt it. You can do just literally what you want because you have control over it, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's um, literally pretty much it for, for this project. Um, again, uh, I will uh, give you the link if you want to actually get it to use it for your development because actually nobody else did it yet and that's something that I needed really recently and, and that's why I'm talking about it today. There we go. I think that's uh, it for me for this application configuration, I think. Uh, do I have anything else to talk about there? Uh, nope. Cool. Questions? Uh, about anything? <laughs> Xamarin? Uh, well, I've been like literally looking with Xamarin at the time that just started existing in the normal times. I've been working with my team with uh, Jason Smith that is developing, uh, which is a lead for Xamarin Forms. Uh, 
in, uh, well, uh, before it was in California, now they moved to Seattle because Microsoft acquired it. We got a pretty good knowledge of the uh, inside out of Xamarin. So literally you can try to find anything at me, I might have the answer. If I, ah, yes, here we go. You, you, you're the first, you get the contract. There we go. So uh, I started with Xamarin, but uh, I had a hard time in compiling, with making a compiling machine for the Mac and iPhone. So is there any easy way to attach a Windows phone with a Mac for compiling and running on simulators? So, so uh, you have, uh, you're having a hard time compiling your application? So connecting a Windows platform with a Mac. Uh, so is that the same Mac or is that like a Mac that is... Uh, I was using Mac Mini uh, for that. Uh, an external memory. Um, well, a good way to do it is just to use Parallels. So you just uh, actually um, use uh, Windows as a VM on your uh, on your Mac. That would be uh, definitely the most reliable one. Uh, that's what I would uh, recommend. Uh, number one, if you cannot do that, uh, and is your uh, Mac Mini within your premises in your network? Yes. Uh, um, well, there we go. Get, uh, yeah, just install Windows on your Mac and just <laughs> do that. There you go. Buy some Mac. Xamarin Test Cloud? Xamarin Test Cloud. You want to know about it? Yes. yes. So it's pretty good. There you go. No, Xamarin uh, Test Cloud is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is literally a pool of devices that are attached to cloud-connected computers and you can actually push some uh, BDD, which is PFGO driven development tests, which is written in Cucumber uh, to some extent. You may or may not be familiar, but basically that goes along this. As a unauthenticated user, when I am on the login page and I put my username on the username box and my password on the password box, and then I click the uh, register, uh, login button, then uh, I am redirected to the uh, welcome page and I can see on the top right corner, welcome Ben. So that is literally what is Cucumber. So um, that is really removing the fear of testing from people that are afraid of testing. Uh, this exactly is the text that I just uh, told you. You just press a button that is going to create a scaffolding of uh, things to test. So you don't even have to think about what to test. And, uh, and then that's it. You just make your way up by Xamarin. Um, that will be looking at a view model and then just look at the properties, uh, just or simply call a command. So I'm going to add the view model, my username, my password, and then I'm going to call the command login. And then that is going to redirect me uh, through navigation services that has been abstracted by using uh, Xlabs, which is the stuff I've talked about. If you just go plain Xamarin form, you won't be able to do that. But by just using Xlabs, you'll be able just to have a hook on the test navigation service. And uh, then you will be able to have a hook on uh, the view model that is currently present. That's one thing. Test Cloud will actually use the same test to um, simply input your username and password on a device and, uh, and just like literally run it through test cloud. So uh, all you need to do is simply send your script, uh, which is what I just told you in plain English, that is going to have behind the scene a little bit of uh, uh, test cloud specific or Gherkin or uh, test UI, that's what it's called, that is going to behind the scene just tell the um, test runner to actually input some text and to cling some buttons on the device. So that allows you to literally test like, I don't know, 10 hundreds of devices uh, with just different operating system, different format, form factors, whatever. Uh, and that will provide you as well with screenshots of when things go wrong or screenshots of uh, every single step. So you'll be able to figure out uh, when your application is not behaving, if the UX is consistent, if the UI is just properly implemented for the mega, uh, giga, duper tabs or just very, very small um, iOS watch. That is just pretty good. And now is super cheap as well, right? Isn't it? The cost is only $1.99 per year. Yes, that's it. No, uh, <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> no, I, I believe that with uh, with uh, the MSN subscription, you just get like a twenty-five or fifty percent off uh, for something that is alright. And uh, yeah. Yeah, as of these days, uh, there is a Xamarin involved. If you know now, it's in the US. So there's some something new will come out. That hopefully, is a uh, can say this is a good news. Uh, just just stay tuned with Xamarin. Okay.
that's what I can add. Yes, but then um, basically Xamarin um, Test Cloud is not for testing Xamarin, it's just to test literally any single app. It is pl platform agnostic because we're not writing code against the actual application. We're just writing code about a runner that is going just to tap some buttons on, uh, on one UI. So uh, in any case, a very good. A lot of customers are actually ne not necessarily using Xamarin, will be using it. Yep. So far, it's Xamarin is all about the C sharp, right? Uh, well, no, actually, you can. Uh, I love F sharp. F sharp is great. Unfortunately, I don't know much F sharp, but there was one that was on the last talk, and uh, he, he he says the, uh, the right stuff is C sharp is great, but it's very busy. Yeah, but uh, uh, what about the support for the JavaScript framework like Angular, Backbone? Uh, well. <coughs> Well, do you want to make honest opinion on JavaScript? No, you don't want it. TypeScript, though, yes, you can have your opinion on TypeScript. TypeScript 2, wow, awesome. Before that, poof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I don't believe they've got plans to do anything with JavaScript because uh, it's, it's, it would be wrong. <laughs> Uh, they wanted to uh, implement in C sharp. Four programmers, not hackers. <coughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, sorry. I, I, I really can't stand JavaScript. It's just type safety uh, should be just like a given. If you don't have type safety, safety don't talk to me. That's it. Uh, what are good resources to learn about Xamarin? What good resources actually is the Xamarin um, uh, um, platform already has got quite a few links there. If you've got an MSDN subscription, you will have a link to the Xamarin University, I believe, which comes free for that. Uh, there is a huge support. The community is very vibrant. If you've got a question, just post anything on the forum. You, I can guarantee you'll have somebody replying to you within not that, that much. Uh, time, especially since Microsoft bought Xamarin. I suppose that a lot of Microsoft minions are going to help um, the um, Xamarin team and everything will go faster. Yes, <laughs> both. Yes, yes, oh, sorry. I, I, I've been fantasizing for Microsoft to buy Xamarin that for the last three years, so now it happens. I can't register it. That's, that's terrible. But uh, yes, uh, uh, honestly, the Xamarin uh, forums are, 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 are great. If you see any issue, oh yes, there's only one thing. Miguel de Icaza just really like Bugzilla. Uh, I don't know why. So it's just forcing Bugzilla on everyone, which, I don't know, we've got Jira, we've got a lot of nice uh, bug tracking system. Bugzilla is not one of them, that's all. Well, except if you like, uh, I suppose if you like uh, common prompts a lot, or maybe, maybe, to some extent. Are they production ready? Oh, they're production ready. They're good. Um, since uh, release 1.3, they are fine. Before release 1.3, uh, I wouldn't. But now we're on release 2.0. Uh, uh, 2. dot a lot. It's really good. Um, as both uh, Soel and Udara mentioned, they are very, very good. So there was a misconception on Xamarin Forms, um, which was you cannot do what you have. You're just tied up a little bit like an app accelerator um, or just a uh, sensor or all this kind of stuff. No, um, the mapping is actually really, really open and they keep on just uh, adding some new features in order to make this mapping and customization easier. So for the uh, for line of business application, I think it's all good because usually line of business don't really care about UX or just changed until <laughs> at, uh, at my last call. But uh, um, I, I think if you don't want something overly pretty, uh, that is still pretty, but just not like crazy. Uh, Xam uh, reinforms natively as just all the control you will need and all the animation you may need. If you want to do something slightly crazy uh, or really have a UX and UI uh, a guy that are really into pixel perfection, which, by the way, they should, uh, then um, you use custom rendezvous, errors, effects, and that will be, uh, that will be fine. Uh, and um, again, I mean, uh, um, I um, wanted to give, like maybe in a couple of uh, months, a talk about some best practices with Xamarin Forms, uh, because that was like a bit too long today to, to uh, dive into. But um, I really strongly uh, uh, would recommend using uh, Xamarin uh, Labs or um, or like a wrapper for what I'm, I'm uh, like I'm going just to put online. Actually, it's already online. 
or um, PRISM actually released something for Xamarin, but it's not production ready yet. Uh, the reason why is uh, if uh, distance of two has to be tested, and it has to be uh, TDD, BDD, whatever, but tested first. Otherwise, it's just going to collapse, and uh, nobody will cry because it was bad de design at the first place. So um, that uh, adding this little layer really allows you to do uh, some great testing on Xamarin. There is something that is still not quite there on Xamarin forms, but I actually saw the problem too, and I might just put that as well there, that allows you to do some uh, BDD properly um, using um, your, your favorite runner. So um, if uh, it will be the Visual Studio runner uh, using um, uh, NUnit, XUnit, what, uh, or MSS if you, if you want as well. Present, there is a little issue that makes that, uh, yeah, whatever, you need to actually run your test on the actually unit itself or on the simulator. That's a bit silly, but um, that's easily overcomable. Um, but production, yes, just go for it. Uh, if you haven't been doing an exam in forms, six months time you can have an app out, uh, I believe. Um, uh, yep. Monkey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, wrong person. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have any controls or uh, libraries for Coat and uh, maybe for uh, advertisements? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Far away. Yes, um, control the library for? Uh, uh, oh, yes, yes. So, uh, well, luckily. Oh, that's very noisy. Uh, Microsoft been doing some really nice stuff with Xamarin uh, indirectly uh, through Azure. So you will have a lot of mobile services and a lot of support on Azure. You have some, I believe, some open authentication libraries uh, for, uh, for Xamarin. Uh, Xamarin, by the way, will have also like a component store. It's got something called recipes, which is uh, uh, where a lot of people post most of the problems that you may have. Uh, but uh, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, open authentication boils down to uh, literally a couple of uh, parameters on the header. You're sending what? Your uh, username, password, you get back a, a token. You keep your token. <laughs> uh, ultimately, well, that, that's 15 lines of code to do it yourself, but people just wrote those 15 lines of code for you. <laughs> uh, I did. If you want them, I can just send it to you via email. <laughs> Uh, we've got some pens. I'm not going to throw them because I might damage someone. Uh, but we've got two pens there. Uh, whoever's got a question gets a pen, even if it's a I don't know, question about cheeseburgers or what is your favorite cheeseburger? <laughs> yes, yes. What are the challenges of migrating? You already have the code base in Android and iOS. Yes. You want to explore Xamarin and see how to standardize. You want to share the logic? Yes. So what are the challenges? I mean, do you have any advice? First of all, if you, um, it depends on how you design your app at, at the start. If you already um, separated your layers nicely, um, kept the UI in one end and the rest somewhere else, uh, through services, through whatever is your favorite uh, okay. uh, practices, then that will be just like super fast because you just, uh, you, you've been doing some Windows on app, you're saying, right? Yeah. And, and Android as well. So you already, your team or yourself already has the knowledge of, of native apps. Uh, native apps, yeah. We yeah. have iOS and Android apps. We have uh, quite gone deep in it, and then we have written a lot of code. Oh, well, that, that, that is good. Is so even recommended to, to go and uh, look at Sam. No, no, absolutely. Uh, to, to, to be honest, if you've got like a na native knowledge, that's going to be much easier because you'll be able to know what is actually uh, the limits that you can push the framework to. You'll be able to see that you can achieve it. So again, as soon uh, as long as your code is separated, mm -hmm. you can actually take the code you already have that is non-UI and just put that. Uh, Maybe case study or something that I can refer to. Someone has already tried this uh, already published app. I mean, you, you, you have customers and you, you want to try whether you can standardize it because you, you spend a lot of time trying to uh, or you've been trying that code in different uh, code bases, so yeah. it's a lot of time. Xamarin will help a lot. Uh, Xamarin will definitely help. And again, it's C Sharp. You've got, uh, are you, have you got a yeah. .NET background as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th that, uh, that would be great. Uh, just it, it will be, it's easier than uh, people think. Mobile development used to be a little bit like uh, five, six years ago, uh, messy. Yeah. 
to say the least, uh, with all these different uh, cross-platform um, companies launching various products, JavaScript-based, whatever-based. And uh, at the end, that was annoying because you had a hard time to be able to actually customize what, uh, whatever you had. And again, if you were a .NET devlo developer, you, you, well, okay, you can go Java, it's easy, but it's just a bit slow, fine. Uh, uh, then, uh, for at the time, we had what? Uh, Swift is better, but Objective-C is literally not something that you really want to code with if you're a sane person. Uh, then. Yeah, maybe then take it offline. Yep. Uh, All right. Uh, I just want to add that. Uh, oh, Ben. Thank you. Uh, if you are like concerned that uh, I spent six months on developing one Android app and I spent another six months developing iOS app, why do I, why do I need to spend another six months to developing same in Xamarin? Uh, so the, the answer is you are uh, just going to spend this six months in Android and iOS. You are not there to just do it six months and then publish it. You are going to maintain it for years then. So that's the main point. Uh, that's the main merit comes to the first time. You will maintain it very beautifully and very uh, using very less resources and less time with your experience for us. So that, that's the one we get to the profession. That's fine. Have a good time. Thank you guys. Well, let's, see, let's see one pen, couple of badges, and some stickers here. Some, some somebody. So can I get the pen then? I'd like to say thank you very much to the speakers. Yeah, and uh, I would like to say thank you to Michael from Engineers.sg for the recordings. So if you miss out anything, you can visit Engineers.sg for the for the recordings. Thank you very much.